we're taking a look at slope intercept form. And slope intercept form looks like this y equals mx plus b, where y and x are our variables, and then m is our slope. So this is the number right before the x. It's the coefficient of x is our slope. And b, so it's going to be a constant term. And this number right here tells us where our y-intercept is. So remember, slope tells us the shape and the direction of our line. And then the y-intercept, remember, is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So let's get some practice in, okay? So we're going to be looking for the slope of a line given an equation. So this first question is, what is the slope of y equals 5x minus 1? So I'm given this equation. And this is in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. I know that's minus, but minus 1 is just the same thing as plus negative 1. So anyway, I'm looking for the slope, I'm looking for the slope. So that's the number right before x. It's the coefficient of x. So in this example, it's 5, right? And then looking at the next one, I have what, what is the slope of y equals 4 minus 2x? This is still in slope-intercept form, but it's just flip-flopped around. Instead of it being y equals mx plus b, we have y equals b plus mx. But still, we just need to look at the number right before the x, right before the x. So in this example, there's a 2 right before the x. But then right before that two, there's a negative sign. So we have to include that negative sign. So my slope here is actually negative two. Just to be clear, the slope up here was five and it's a positive five, that positive is implied. We don't have to write it because we just know when we say five, we mean positive, right? Let's take a look at a couple y-intercept examples. So again, looking for the y-intercept given an equation. And, and remember, y-intercept is the constant number. It doesn't have a variable attached to it, right? So let's take a look. So it's what is the y-intercept of y equals 5x minus 1? So I need to look at this number right here, the one that doesn't have a variable in it. And just like before, if it has a negative sign right in front or a subtraction sign right in front, then that stays with it. So my y-intercept here is negative 1. And then in this one, y equals negative 2x plus 6. My y-intercept is just that constant number. It's 6. Um, now we're being asked to write an equation in slope-intercept form, given the slope and the y-intercept. Let's take a look. So we're told to complete the equation of the line whose slope is negative 2 and y-intercept is 0, 3. So the slope is going to be negative 2. Slope is going to be negative 2. So that means m equals negative 2. And then my y-intercept is at 0, 3. It's at 0, 3. So earlier, we just said, oh, the y-intercept was at negative 1, and the y-intercept is at 6. But in reality, let's, let's look at the graph. So imagine I have right a y-axis and an x-axis, and I have a graph like this. That means that my y-intercept would be right here. And that right there is a point, right? And every point can be written as an ordered pair, x comma y. That's how I need you to write your y-intercept. It has to be written as 
or her parent. So in these examples up here, so if my y-intercept was at negative one, that would be like this point right here, which is, um, so I don't go left or right at all. I just go down. So my x-coordinate is zero, and then my y-coordinate is negative one. And then a y-intercept of six would be, let's say, up here a little bit. And again, if that's my, I'm trying to find my coordinate, right? My x, my y coordinate, that would be zero because I don't go left or right. I just go up to six. So zero, six. So you might notice that the x coordinate. of the y-intercept is always zero. The first number in the ordered pair of the y-intercept will always be zero. It's the second number that shows up in our equation, right? So down here, we're told that the y-intercept is at 0, 3, right? That would be kind of like where this pink dot is. 0 doesn't go left to right at all, just goes up the y-axis to 3. And what that tells me is my b in my equation that I'm going to write is going to be 3. So again, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is my slope, and b is my y-intercept. So when I want to write an equation for the line who has a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 0, 3, I need to plug in negative 2 for m and 3 for b. So I am given the first little bit, y equals, and then m, which is negative 2, so negative 2 x plus b, which is 3. So complete the equation of a line whose slope is 4 and whose y-intercept is 0, negative 1. So m is going to equal 4, and b is going to equal negative 1. And that means my equation is y equals m, which is 4, x plus b, which is negative 1. So I can write it plus negative one, or what I like to do is just write minus one. And that's it. Now let's go on to a few special cases. So this is when we have a slope or a y-intercept of zero or one. It can just make the equation look a little different. And then also when we are representing horizontal and vertical lines our equations look a little bit different. So let's look at this first one. It says, what is the slope of y equals x plus 5? The slope of this is actually 1. And that's because, so we have, we can see in our equation, y equals x plus 5. So since it's just an x, just because you cannot see the coefficient on this, it looks like it's just an x it actually has an invisible coefficient, a little invisible number in front of that x, which is 1, right? So my slope in this situation is 1. All right, and now this one. So this says, what is the slope of y equals 8? So what is my slope if I can't see the x at all? So I don't know what the number is before it. I'm going to rewrite this a different way. So I'm going to rewrite this as 
So I'm gonna rewrite this equation as y equals plus eight. And I'm going to write this like this, zero x. If I have zero x, anything times zero is always zero. And so if I had a coefficient of zero, I wouldn't see it show up in the equation. So when I have something like this and it says y equals a number, y equals a constant, that means that I have a slope of zero. And what that looks like on a graph is like this. Slope of zero is like boring flatlands. And then, um, so that's a horizontal line, right? Now let's look at how we figure out the equation for a vertical line. It's just the opposite as a horizontal line. We're going to, instead of it being y equals a constant number, it's x equals a constant number. So x equals five because the whole entire line, x is always, always, always going to equal five. And we call this slope undefined. Um, another example, we've got y, what is a y-intercept of y equals 4x? So I could rewrite this a different way as y equals 4x plus 0. So again, if I had a plus b, if, my, if I had a value of zero for b, then it wouldn't really show up at all, right? It would just show up as y equals 4x. So in this case, my y-intercept is zero. And remember, we write our y-intercept as an ordered pair. And in that ordered pair for the y-intercept, my x-coordinate is zero. And then the y-intercept is b, is b from the equation. And in this equation, b is zero. So my y-intercept of this equation is at zero, zero, is at the origin. What is the y-intercept of y equals eight? Remember, y equals eight was our horizontal line. And our y-intercept, it's really simple. It's still going to be an ordered pair, and the x-coordinate of my y-intercept is always zero, and then the y-coordinate is just eight. It's just given to us right there in the equation. And then for a y-intercept of x equals five, which remember shows us our vertical line, y-intercept of x equals five, is um, is also undefined. There's no y-intercept in a vertical line because it never crosses the y-axis. No y-intercept, all right? So I'm going to post a link to a Khan Academy assignment that looks just like this. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know if you have questions. I'm going to be on Zoom on Thursday, Monday, and Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you have any questions, you could also email me or leave a comment in Google Classroom somewhere. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great day.